Today we're in Pictograph Park, State Park I think it is, in central Montana, not far from Billings. And my uh, beloved wife had come here when I was out gallivanting and up in the mountains, told me about this, and so I was like, well, I gotta come and paint this. She took some pictures. It's always nice to have a scout. I can uh, be on the lookout for you. It's kind of kind of windy today in this area. It's supposed to get um, around the hundred degrees. It's still morning, but the heat is definitely kicking in. But I'm going to try to get a small sketch of this done. This isn't super small, but it's uh, fairly small. Um, the backdrop behind me isn't the most romantic, um, but that's what's there. So you have to go with what you can what you got so um, I will admit rocks are a little bit of a challenge for me so we'll, we'll see how this goes but if something is a challenge and you want to learn how to paint it you got to go out and paint it so I'm just gonna try to take my time and and enjoy the process um, if you're new to my channel if you haven't or if you've been watching for a while and you haven't done so, if you could subscribe, that would be awesome. Helps inspire me to continue making these videos. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new, you might not know if you like it yet. So you can wait. I'll try to remember to remind you later. Though I don't always do that. <laughs> that good of a job reminding. I'm a solo act here and it's uh, sometimes I fantasize about having a caddy or something like that to hold signs up. Let's say, don't say anything stupid. Um, remind them to subscribe so on and so forth but I'm not that lucky so alright so the, my main thing here is getting I, I got some uh, greens blocked in I want to get this shadow that shadow is going to change pretty fast I wanted to get the greens in because I wanted to uh, have something to judge this shadow from. I'm going to go just a bit cooler than I think I need to go. This is just an approximate. Not sure if you can hear the cows bleeding in the background. They're upset about something. Probably because they know it's going to be 100 degrees today and they got to be out in it. And when you're out painting a scene like this, the light's going to change on these rocks really fast. And I think for me that's why rocks are can, can be such a challenge because the light is constantly moving. You don't always notice that until you actually try painting them and then you just you see how fast light moves and it's just like wow.
and I'm probably not going about this in the smartest way. I should have probably just stuck with little sketches. And, um, you know, just focused on, focus on what I could get. Little, little sketches, little rocks and things like that, but we'll see if I bit off more than I can chew. I should have maybe painted this a bit smaller as well instead of trying to cover up so much canvas with fast changing light. But Prudence was not my ally today. I get excited sometimes when I see these big scenes and I mean, you should see me sometimes when I see something that I really want to paint, especially when I'm out west, I will just jump in, I'll just practically jump out of my car and stop traffic, things like that. So these are just approximate tones to get me close, so I have something to work with. So basically what we're doing is a uh, full color block in. The sky is a very intense blue. I did not start with the sky though. In the past, it would have, and this probably would have been a disaster as a result. Um, a lot of people start with the sky. You've heard me say this before if you watch my other videos. When I do that, I end up painting the sky way too dark. I want to capture all that rich blue. And then when I go down here, <clears throat> it, the whole thing just falls apart. It doesn't fit in well together. For many years, I would come back with paintings that just something about them didn't look right and it's because I was starting with a more ambiguous um, element of the sky rather than starting with uh, something I was more certain of. Now, I'm going to get some of this sky blocked in, but I'm not going to worry about getting a perfect representation of it in there. I just want to use it as a keen in element for judging all my other values. The sky is not going to change at all during my painting session. So, just enough to get me going, to judge everything, and it seems pretty good. In fact, let's just scrub a little bit more over there. When you're planar painting, you always want to be aware of what um, 
but where the light's going to shift, where it's going to move, what's going to happen. You almost have to become kind of a meteorologist. You know, is the light going to uh, move this direction, that direction, or the shadow's going to shift this way or that way? Um, you know, is the cloud's going to move in and screw the whole thing up for you? So you always want to uh, be on the lookout for things like that. On these uh, plein air painting trips that I take, I only take about one a year because that's all I can really pull off right now um, financially in that. But on these uh, plein air painting trips, I am like constantly like a mad dog looking at weather.com, AccuWeather, going back and forth. Is it going to be cloudy? Is it going to be sunny where is it going to be cloudy where is it going to be sunny bringing up the satellite i'm a bit neurotic about it but that's how i got to plan my day i think i hear an eagle somewhere out there All right, let's uh, scuff this thing up a bit. Kind of show it who's boss. the pal a quick cleaning okay so now I want to get in if I can find the right brush I want to get in the uh, highlight areas here on these rocks and the big thing to compare it with is compare the value and the tone I have of these highlight rocks with the sky with this approximate shadow tone which is going to need adjustment and with this ground plane okay and squint at the scene and I'm really trying to compare right now this with that and with this um, area here. And my values seem to be pretty good. So let's dive in. By the way, I, I didn't mention my colors. Cadmium white, nickel yellow. This is cadmium chartreuse. I've been playing around with this color out here. Cadmium yellow light. Um, cadmium orange, yellow ochre, transparent red oxide, cadmium red, alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, sorry to take a breath there, cobalt blue, cerulean, viridian, and chromium green oxide. Oh, and up here I have Gamblin's Portland Gray.
I'm by a visitor center, but it's very peaceful here. Um, not much in the way of uh, noise or traffic and things like that. I always like that when I can paint in a uh, quiet area. Okay, so I have some light blocked in and I know I'm not where I want to be with it. But I have a feeling it's not the highlights that are so much the problem, it's my shadows. I did just whip in kind of an approximate shadow color. I think I need to play with that some in order to uh, get the effect that I want. Okay, so I'm going to thin this down just a bit, scrape off the excess, um, because I'm not terribly certain of everything here yet. As I said, my uh, confidence in painting rocks is not as high as my confidence in painting like trees and things like that. a little too light. Um, forewarning, I might not talk as much in this video as I do in others. Just because uh, when I feel challenged and when I'm uncertain, I really have to concentrate. And then I don't talk as much. I know some people might enjoy that. So when you're dealing with a situation like this where you're not certain, um, you know, about your subject and your confidence in doing it, I just try to... Uh, First of all, suspend any thought about what you're painting. Don't sit there and think, oh my goodness, I'm painting a rock, I'm painting a rock, I'm no good at painting rocks. And Get that thinking out of your head. You're never going to get anywhere if you do that. And just really look at it and go, okay, what? Just think of it as color shapes, that's all. And that's all reality is. It's just shapes of color. If there's any secret to painting, that's it. It's um, just that reality are shapes of color 
and you just have to replicate not those shapes and values exactly as they are you need to replicate the relationships between those shapes to capture the effect of that the effect that's being created that's what you need to capture and if you can do that you're you're good you're home free that's it then it's just learning your getting really familiar with your colors your paints and everything so that when you see something you have a pretty good idea of what colors you need to mix together to achieve that effect Okay, so now here's a really good lesson. See, as I'm putting in these, um, as I'm making adjustments to these shadow values, the highlights are starting to make sense to me now. Not that they're perfect, but they're a heck of a lot better. Before they were, I was just like, okay, this, <laughs> this might be a disaster. But um, now things are starting to make sense. And we have a little tiny cloud that's kind of blocking the sun. The sky is very clear for the most part. This would be a nightmare to paint on a uh, partly cloudy day. Just because you'd have so much going on with the sun being blocked and then it comes out and then it's blocked and you know, so like, let's say a big cloud came in, covered up, you know, the sun for like five, ten minutes, then the sun comes back out. Well, now the sun's shifted a little bit. It's not in the same spot where it was before. You know, all your shadows have moved a little bit. And that can just be a royal pain to work under. But I um, just wanted to say that, you know, when you're when you're doing a painting, if something isn't working out, you just keep hammering at this one spot over and over again. You just can't get it right. I can almost guarantee you that it's not the spot you're hammering and working on that's the problem. It's what's next to it that's the problem. Try it out next time, next time you're dealing with a situation like that. Sounds like the cows are starting back up again. I'm going to have to replenish my yellow ochre here soon. If this painting turns out well, you're going to see me do the Snoopy happy dance. Not literally. Um, I'd probably lose half, half my subscribers if I did that on video. It looks so stupid. But um, I'm going to be very happy. Just because, like I said, rocks are a bit of a challenge. And that's what's so cool about plein air painting is when you get... When you work at something, you work at something, and you finally master something you were having trouble with before, it can be an awesome feeling. And it's an incredible feeling when you go home and you uh, take your uh, painting out that you had done, and you look at it, and it actually looks really good. And it just hits you like, there it is, you were there. You saw it, you captured it. There is nothing like that feeling. Not to say it's the best feeling in the world. There is much better feelings like, you know, when you're uh, 
you know, little uh, cute little four-year-old, five-year-old comes up and hugs you and tells you he loves you, things like that. Those are better feelings. But um, from an artistic perspective, it is a cool feeling when you get that, when you nail it, and you know you nailed it. Especially on something you've uh, had trouble with in the past. It's way too much a lizard in there. Another thing to keep in mind too is um, with drawing. Um, I've seen artists uh, go out and paint plein air and they'd spend like, you know, an hour or two trying to draw every little crevice correctly. And by the time they're done, the light's completely changed. Don't be that person, okay? Um, uh, you know, unless you're going to be out here multiple days and have all that time to work on it, you know, multiple sessions, if you're out for just a short period of time and you're not going to be back at this location anytime soon, just get an approximate drawing good enough to where it looks reasonably close and then get the colors and values colors and values that's what it's all about here a good strategy something that I will do is if I really am concerned about drawing it from life and getting it you know, correct because there's things that camera will just squash it down and you know and given that you don't have time to get super precise drawing yeah you know, I get there's times where you want to uh, draw it very carefully what I would say is if the lighting's where you like it when you go out okay you set up and you're like I love that lighting I don't want it to change yeah, of course it's gonna change no matter what but you like the lighting you don't want it to change get your plein air sketch done get your colors blocked in even if it's kinda rough and cruddy and then when you're all done with your plein air sketch and you've captured the colors and values then grab a sketch pad and come back or just have the sketch pad with you come back to the scene and do your uh, really careful pencil study of it to get all the shapes correct because at that point you know it doesn't matter if you're just going after shapes it doesn't matter whether it's overcast if it's sunny you know if the, sh if the lights shifted and all this is in um, sunlight it might matter for some of the you know differences between the lights and darks the shapes that they're creating but if you're just trying to get like the outline and the whole feel um, do that later do it later and that, I, that's one strategy that I uh, I implement quite a bit I'll see the scene I'll do the scene in plein air Then I'll come back with my sketch pad, or not come back, I'll just, you know, have the sketch pad with me and um, then I'll sit down and do my little plein air pencil sketch. But if I'm worried about all the shapes, like these little shapes here, I, I let the camera get that for me. And it can be a good idea to uh, 
photograph the scene periodically while you're painting it. Now, one thing, and th this is the stuff you want to look out for when you're planning painting, and you really get this by squinting at the scene, is as it comes down here, it gets a little darker and a little warmer in value. It's a very subtle shift. If you don't squint at the scene, you're probably going to miss that stuff. Same with down here. You get a little darker. Actually, I'm seeing quite a bit of blue in that. Right there. Let's just put those little notes of color in there. Planar painting is a lot. Actually, painting period is has everything to do with looking at the big picture. No pun intended, but you know, focusing on how all these relationships affect each other. So every time I look at this, I'm trying to remind myself, I don't always do it, but trying to remind myself to always squint at the scene and then paint the impression of what I saw when my eyes were squinted. I'm going to switch to a uh, badger hair brush, imitation badger hair brush. Don't want anyone to think I'm out killing mongooses. Mongooses are awesome, they kill cobras and things like that. But little guys are in the endangered species list, I guess. So, But Rosemary and Company makes a great imitation mongoose airbrush. Now a lot of these valleys are shifting. We're starting to get some little bits of light over here coming in. So I'm just going to borrow a couple little streaks just to give some interest here. See, I don't even know if I like that. I think I'm going to leave this. 
I just love that big simple dark mass. So that big simple dark mass is going to stay as it is. And as I squint and I glance up at the scene, as we move down into the smaller rocks here, a, um, the highlights on them get a little darker in value, a little warmer. So I'm just adding some colors that I know are going to get me there. By the way, if you're uh, interested in studying under me, I teach live online oil painting classes through Zoom. We meet once a week, usually on Saturdays. Um, usually once a week, sometimes if there's five weeks in that month, we will, well, five Saturdays in that month, we only meet for four of them. But, um, Anyway, all the uh, sessions are recorded, and uh, I take you step by step through a painting from start to finish. We don't paint nearly this fast, because we don't have to. I have to paint super fast out here. And I do a heck of a lot more explaining and teaching. And if you're serious about taking your art to the next level and you don't just want to watch videos but you actually want to work on a painting with other people without having to leave the uh, the convenience of your home and you want to um, get feedback on how to make how to improve your work that's one of the big things um, watching videos watching my videos and that yeah, it can be helpful for sure, and I hope you are finding these helpful, but when you go to paint on your own and the painting doesn't turn out, well, where do you go with that? That's And with the live online workshops, you know, I can take a peek at what you're doing and hope the dog doesn't attack me. We also have live Q&A and critique sessions where I can look at other paintings you've done or you can ask me questions, art related questions, anything you want. And um, get some good ideas. 
all the sessions are recorded, so if you can't make it, no big deal. But if you're interested, click on the link below, check it out. Love to have you there. We take all levels. Um, I do ask that you, uh, you know, if you're going to sign up, there's a waiting list because um, I can't let people in in the middle of the month when we're halfway through a painting. So if a spot becomes open, I, you're, if you get on that priority list, I'll let you know that it's first come, first serve. And if you're interested, you can join us. If you're wondering what the cost is, I'm not going to give the cost on the video because, you know, if, if it's five years from now, the cost most likely will have changed. But let's just say that you're going to pay, uh, you're probably going to be paying less per, per hour than you would if you were taking piano lessons or something like that. And if you're, if you're looking at the cost from a you know immediate perspective, um, what it is per month, um, that's not really the way to do it. When you calculate the fact that once you become a member, you get immediate access to past recordings of all sessions, which um, is many, many, many hours of instruction that you can just watch on your own. Also, the fact that it's um, at least um, probably 12 to 15 hours a month. You're not going to find uh, much better value out there than what, uh, what I'm offering. Like I said, only do it if you uh, really want to get better. Workshops are not magic. You do have to put some effort into it on your own. But if you put the effort in and you get good instruction, you're going to uh, grow by leaps and bounds. And I do promise you, you will learn Unless you're better than me. If you're better than me, then, you know, don't take my workshops. Maybe I'll take yours. Now, there's some trees on the top of this thing. Um, I might put a couple here. Just because I think that area would be a nice area for a dark mass. Otherwise, I'm probably going to leave them off the top there. We may have company. Somebody is sitting in their vehicle right now. Right behind me. It's not a parking spot, so I did wait to them. Or maybe they're planning on how to mug me or something. No, just kidding. And they're still sitting there. <laughs> Maybe they're trying to get an art lesson for free. You guys are getting an art lesson for free, so. If I give them my uh, card YouTube channel, maybe they'll go back and watch my other videos.
little too much yellow in there. Up here we get some um, slightly darker, almost lavenderish type tones. Can't name the colors. You you can't ever really name colors in nature. And you'll run across them here and there that you can name, but for the most part, it's not going to happen. Nature is composed mostly of grays, believe it or not. It's not composed of a whole bunch of um, you know exact precise colors. You know, like red and blue, things like that. Almost everything in nature, with very few exceptions, has got to be grayed down to a certain degree when you're painting it. One of the great um, painters of the West was Maynard Dixon. He did a lot of uh, scenes like this. More down, I'm in Montana, he did it more down in like New Mexico and Arizona. But um, really could see the uh, abstract quality in rocks and things like that, how they could make a beautiful painting. If you're interested in painting rocks and things like that, I highly recommend you check out his work. Also, if uh, you're interested in supporting my channel, um, hopefully you've given me a uh, like and a thumbs up if you're watching this long. But um, if you're interested in supporting my channel, I have a Patreon account set up um, where you can contribute 
a monthly amount to help me pay for all the extra fun stuff that goes into making these videos. Extra camera cards, batteries, software, paint, brushes, canvas, on and on and on. There's a lot that I wasn't expecting when I first started doing this that mounted up. I had to get a new camera so it wouldn't overheat. If I was using my old digital SLR, which I used in my earlier videos, first of all, the quality wasn't as good because the camera's like 10 years old. But if I was using that, it'd be overheating like crazy right now and I wouldn't be able to shoot this video, especially when it's getting close to 100 degrees out here. But, um, if you do, if you support me, I first of all, I thank you profusely, tremendously, deeply from the bottom of my heart. I really mean that. I will send you a personal thank you email as well. And if I don't, if I forget, say something in the comment section and I'll, and I'll put myself in the corner and or let my kids uh, give me some kind of discipline <laughs> and, then, uh, I, and then I'll send you a thank you. But um, anyway, the big thank you that I will give you though is once a month I'm going to be uh, giving away one of my plein air sketches. It'll be unframed. And most of those sketches I do just for the uh, YouTube channel. I just go out and I find something to paint that I think you guys would benefit from watching me. Sorry, I think I was holding my paper towel up in front of the thing there. Somebody's probably saying, move your darn hand, pal. But um, anyway, um, I just go out and I find stuff to paint that I think you guys might benefit from. Now, this is different. I will not give away like this sketch of my Western sketches here. So if you join in the hopes of winning this sketch or any of my Western sketches uh, and that's it, don't become a Patreon supporter then because you'll probably be disappointed. But um, anyway, my other ones, I'll just be uh, giving them away. The other thing too is I can just run out and do another sketch of them again if I really need to, but my primary subject matter is Western, and so when I come out West and paint, I need to keep those paintings for obvious reasons. And I know too that um, there are commercials on my YouTube channel. You might have just skipped through one, depending on when the uh, bots decide to put the commercials in. I let the bots do that, not me. But um, trust me, those commercials don't pay much. If I start getting a million views, and maybe uh, I will, you know, then then it will be much, but. So far, that's not the case, so. I should have brought my water with me. I'm getting terribly thirsty out here. I have water in my car, which is just on the other side of this building, which is the visitor center. But um, I was so darn excited about this, I just forgot the water. If I get enough uh, Patreon support, I'm going to ditch this corded microphone. It's got like a 12 foot cord here or something and get a nice uh, wireless one so I'm no longer tripping on the cord. And what I ultimately would like to do is um, 
a couple things. I'd like to take some more planner painting trips and share them with you guys. That would require quite a bit of support. Um, and I would like to uh, get another camera and maybe live record the actual scene. Right now you see a photograph on the side, you know, right over here, of what I'm doing. But the lights, the lights always shifting, things are changing, and I thought, because I don't think anyone else is doing this, I thought it'd be the coolest idea to actually, if I can pull it off, it would require a lot more editing on my part, but um, to have an actual live video showing on the scene that I'm painting while I'm painting it. So that you guys could actually see the light changes in real time as they're happening. You can see, you, you'd be able to see like what I'm up against. Okay, I just have a uh, horse fly that just discovered me. A biting fly. Okay, down here, there's a lot of these uh, little rocks and shrubs and things like that. I'm not going to try to render each one of them perfectly individually. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the palette knife and just kind of go in. Actually, yeah, try to kill that fly too while I'm at it. He's starting to actually cause bleeding on me. I have sunscreen on, but not bug repellent. But anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of abstract those shapes a bit. I finally left. He wasn't going to leave soon. I was going to have to stop the camera and go fly hunting. As his bites were starting to hurt. I have a uh, tractor trailer, some kind of tanker, it stopped right by me. So I apologize for that background noise. 
I'm right along a road. It's a dead end road to the visitor center. So maybe this guy's got something to do here. Some type of tanker anyway. <laughs> really takes away from the mood. It looks like he's got to fill up something here, so he might be here a little bit. So I apologize, but I can't do a whole lot about it. That's just the way of plein air painting. Good, how are you doing? Good. Tired of the heat yet? Ah, <laughs> well, you gotta be out here to get the colors. Alright. Cool. Thanks. Yeah, I don't know what the temperature is, but I know it's supposed to get hot. Yeah. At least it's not humid. I'm from Pennsylvania. Oh. The humidity there is... I'll take the dry heat any day over that crap. The humidity there is just... Supposed to be like 99 today. Yeah. Doesn't feel like it, you know, my wife thinks I'm crazy on this, but I don't get as hot when I'm out west here. Um, a couple years, a few years ago, we were in South Dakota, or North Dakota actually, and it was getting hot like this. And, you know, I, I probably because I sweat so much when I am hot, but out here I don't. Yeah. And the nice thing about it here is that it cools off at night. Oh, yeah. There. The humidity just keeps everything there like a wet blanket. So I've been down in Oklahoma a lot. Does it get pretty humid down there too? Oh, yeah. 
Yep, I'll take the, uh, I'll take hot, dry days and cool nights any day. Uh-huh. This was closed for a long time. Oh really? Yeah, this happened this year, yeah. Oh, so all this rock fell this last winter you said? Wow. That definitely makes for an interesting painting subject. Yeah. Well, don't have, too much fun. have a good one. So the uh, gentleman I was just talking to said that a bunch of this... Oops. That's loud. <laughs> I'll wait.
What's up? Oh yeah. Yeah, we have. Uh, Minnesota's like that too. My, I'm originally from there. My family's there, and they haven't been able to. It's their their grass is like burnt to a crisp. Yeah, yeah it's uh, not good here. Yeah, yeah. Somebody throw a match out the window, probably burn out the state down. Oh yeah. Yeah, we've already had fires. There's a big one on my red log. Is there?
Okay, so the tanker truck finally left. That was a lot of noise for quite a while. Um, I apologize for not being able to comment during that, but nice guy. It just it was a very uh, inconvenient time for what I'm doing, but he's got his schedule and everything too. He's got to he's got to do so. But anyway, um. You can you see I took all that shrubbery and everything out. I um, just did not like how that was looking, and it's nice when you can do those things on location. If I would have just rushed to get this done, you can see I also changed this rock. I brought this rock down. I thought it was getting way too uh, competitive with the uh, subject matter. It's a tricky rock, the shape of it. Um, according to the guy, though, who is uh, running the tanker, he said that about a year ago, all these rocks here um, came tumbling down, and you couldn't even get back here for a while. They weren't letting people back. I guess they had to probably clean them quite a bit up. So anyway, um, this whole area is pretty much in sunlight now. A lot has changed. And this though hasn't changed much, which is why I'm able to continue working on it. But I, I didn't like all those grasses, all those shrubs from a compositional perspective, so I just wiped them all out. And a lot of that just comes from experience. You know, the more, the longer you paint, the more instinctive you can be with your uh, composition and you know, what you think is going to work and what doesn't work. Now, if I decide to ever do this painting back home, you know, in the studio, I'll probably change, make even more changes to it. And I've been spending quite a bit of time on this painting. But I just really like the subject matter. I really want to get more into uh, rocks just because I feel that they are a bit of a weakness for me. And um, I love good rock paintings. So I figured I might as well spend some time really study these. And if I can get to the point where I'm confident enough to make changes to them on the location, then I'm going to be even that more confident in the studio. As this comes down and flattens out, it gets a little lighter in value, but I don't think I'm going to show that part. You really couldn't see that part anyway from this vantage point. Now I think the only thing left for me to do is the sky, to tweak that up a bit, and then go drink about a half a gallon to a gallon of water. I'm gonna grab some clean white some cobalt. I just want to work the edges.
just doing a lot of wiping with my brush. It just dawned on me I'm hungry too. I ate on my way here, but I have not been eating a whole lot these days in Montana. It's because I've been spending so much time driving in areas where there's not much in the way of food to eat. And I bring some food with me, but it's funny though when I see something I want to paint like I said before I, I just get kind of stupid out here and before I see something I want to paint I might have to go to the bathroom really bad and you know be thirsty hungry and then there's my subject the lights changing fast all those concerns kind of go out the window and it's like, I'll start painting, it's like I wasn't ever hungry, I wasn't ever thirsty, I didn't have to use the bathroom. And then, when I get done painting, it's like the moment I stop, I set my brush down, all of a sudden, I have to go to the bathroom again, I have to use the, I'm really thirsty again, it's funny how that works. I'm almost seeing when I look in this part of the sky just hints of um, like a lavender so I'm putting that in there it's just kind of my impression of what's going on the vibration of color up in the sky I want to thank you for watching and for sticking around with me this long if you have. If you haven't, it doesn't matter anyway because you're not here. So you're not hearing this. But for those of you who have, thank you so much. Um, and if you could like this video, hit subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And, um, You know, consider supporting me on Patreon. And if you want to uh, study under me, improve on your painting, get some good feedback. Um, Sign up on the waiting list for my workshops. Link is below. Same with the Patreon link. Love to have you there. All right, I think we're gonna call that a sketch. Thanks again for watching and we will see you soon.